All right, today we're going to look at how to move a row of data from one spreadsheet to a completely different sheet based on when a dropdown matches. And then we're also going to just check one other thing if a checkbox is checked. So we're going to cover a couple different conditions. I will have a link in the description to download these sheets. Um, you will have to update um, this ID, but we'll cover that here in a minute when we start doing our script. So we have our sheet set up with some data. And so let's go ahead and open up our app script. Go to extensions and app script. We'll go ahead and just give this a generic name like script. And basically what we're going to be doing here is using what's referred to as an on edit function. So there's two ways you can do this. One is using this on edit name here. And this, as soon as you authorize a script, it'll run automatically. However, I like to do my own named functions because this gives me the ability to go into triggers and turn it off. So the way I would make this work now, on edit will work automatically as soon as I hit run and authorize. Um, this isn't going to ask me to do anything here, so let's go ahead and stop this. I haven't added anything there. But when I do check my sheet, I actually have to create this trigger um, like so and click save. So what this allows me to do then is if I want to turn it off, I actually can. Um, whereas then on edit, as long as it's that function is there, it's going to run. So I just like this because it gives me a little more control. Now this E inside the parentheses stands for the event object. And so every time you edit your sheet, Google's going to send a little data about what was just done inside this E. And so we're going to pull some data out of it here. For example, the range and it just lives in this e.range object. And then another thing we can do is we can find out source sheet. Um, so the sheet name, let's say, and this one's going to be e.source. And then I'm going to go get active sheet and then get name. And so this will give me the name of the sheet. Um, this isn't super important this one because we only have one tab, but I'm going to add this in because it's probably likely that you have multiple tabs. So we're going to check our tab name as well. Now we can grab some quick other variables. So for example, let's find the column to make sure we're in column A. So this is going to be range.getcolumn. And then let's get the row as well, range.getrow. Make sure we add our semicolons there, keep it clean. And then let val equals range.getValue. Oh, value, not values. The difference there is range uh, values is getting it from a multiple range value is from a single cell. All right, so now we have what we need to get started. So let's go ahead and open up an if statement. And so we want to check and do this only if our column is a or one. And then we also only want to do it for val equals sold. And then let's go ahead and check as well that our sheet name equals leads, the leader leads, leads. There we go. So now we're checking for these three criteria. So we have if column equals one and value equals sold and sheet name equals leads. Now if we meet all those criteria, then we will want to go ahead and grab our data and move it to our target sheet. So before we get too far, let's go ahead and grab the ID from our target sheet, which is between these two forward brackets the long alphanumeric. So we're going to copy that. And so if you make a copy of this for your own project, make sure on your new target sheet that you grab this ID and update this in the script. I'm going to go ahead and put it up here at top. And so make sure to update this when you copy this project. All right, so first of all, let's get our data. So we're going to go let SS or spreadsheet. And then we're going to get spreadsheet app, get active spreadsheet and then let sheet equals get sheet by name and sheet name that we already grabbed. So this SS stands for our current spreadsheet that we're in, which is this one, because that's the one that this script is living in. And then we're getting our sheet by the sheet name here that we already had, which should equal leads if it passes this function. 
All right, so now we can get our data. So let data equals sheet dot get range. And then in our range, we specify row, column, etc. So we already have a row right here. So we're going to select row. And then column, we can do a couple different things. So I'm going to start here. I'm just going to grab the whole row, excluding this one. And then we're going to move over with that status. But this is going to be easy to adjust if we need it to. Um, so column one, and then number rows one, and then how many columns we want to return. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Let's go ahead and put eleven in there, and then get values. If you remember, this is for a multiple range instead of a single cell. So now we have our data, and now we need to get our target sheet. So let's get our target SS. Instead of just SS, we're going to get target SS equals spreadsheet app again, but this time we want open by ID. And we have that ID up above. And then let target sheet equals target SS get sheet by name. And then we're going to have to grab the name here. So let's go ahead and grab this target and then copy that in there. And then finally, we can just say target sheet append row and data. So there's two ways to do this. We can do append row or we can do get range target sheet get last row plus one 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 and eleven set values and data or we can do this and actually I need these brackets around here. I'm gonna record a video here shortly about arrays to help explain this but uh, in this case, if we do a pen row, we're going to, need to wrap this in those brackets. So we can use either one of these methods. Obviously, you can see a pen row is much simpler and shorter, and it works as long as you're using all the same rows. So if, for example, we want to get rid of this status here, uh, but we still have this first column here, if we do a pen row, it's going to automatically put it starting in that first column. So for now, we're just going to use append row because it's going to use what we need. But I'm going to just comment out this other one with the two forward slashes. And you can see it turn green, which means it's not going to be used. And just so you know, I am using a add-on here. And it's called Black App Script. You can find it in the Chrome Web Store. Let's go to there. And Black App Script. Uh, right here. This one's an awesome one to use. It helps your app script look normal. Otherwise, what it ends up looking like when you get in here is like this, which is a lot harder to read. So I like um, some of these in here. Let's cycle through a couple more. I like it more gray. There we go. All right, so this is going to work as is. So the one thing I'll need to do is authorize the script and then I'm going to need to add my trigger. So I can do it either way. I can run from here and it'll ask me to authorize or I can go to trigger and add that there. So I'm just going to run it real quick here. It's going to ask for permissions. And then it's giving us this error because we're requesting access to a different sheet. So Google just has this warning here. So we're just going to run through this real quick. See and delete all your spreadsheets. Hit allow. Now it's given this error and this is perfectly normal because it's looking for this E object and we ran it from here and so it can't find it. So next off, let's go ahead and create our trigger. And again, we already saw this before, add this. And then once this adds, we got in here. So we can go back to our editor, see that and make sure that our script is working. Make sure we have no typos. So let's go ahead and just start here, sold. And let's see what happens. All right, we have this error. So I think I actually told you wrong. I actually need to do this. So I had that backwards. So um, because we're getting this as an array, it's actually coming through as double array. So this would be, for example, sold uh, first name. Etc. So 
I actually need to get inside. So that's why I need this zero. So let's go ahead and check it out now. And it should work fine. Let me go ahead and delete this from here. And let's reboot this one. Just delete or backspace. And then let's go ahead and try this again. Sold. And there we go. Now it's coming through. Perfect. So what happens if, um, first of all, um, if we want to delete this row, second of all, what if we want to make sure we actually have a sale amount before we let it move? So let's go ahead and check this out. So first of all, let's go ahead and look at what it means to delete this row. This is actually fairly easy. Delete row, row. So we already have the row here that that data was on, and then this delete row will delete it. So I usually like to do that after we get the data moved, just in case there's an error or a bug. Um, that way we don't delete the data before it gets moved. So since we still have this data here, we'll check that out in a second. So let's do one more thing. Let's make sure that our sale amount is filled in. So what we're gonna do here is another quick check. So let's actually get here. We're gonna do one more check. So let's check the sale amount equals sheet get range so row and then this is going to be let's just type in column here figure out what column number is 10. we're gonna get 10 and then get value so what we're gonna do now is another if and we're gonna check if sale amount is not equal to blank and if so we'll proceed now what happens if the sale amount is blank? So what if we selected sold and the sale amount is blank? Now what do we wanna do? So we'd like to do alert. So maybe we'll do a little pop up here and delete our sold status. So let's go ahead and add that other condition here. If sale amount is blank. Now we want to, first of all, delete row and this will be one and then let's do clear content and so this is going to clear out all sold and let's make a little toast here so it's ss toast and say fill in sale amount before moving row and then we can add a little title here and a time let's say we want to show up five seconds just like that so let's go ahead and check this out so let's go ahead and refresh this one. So we don't have a sale amount, so we should get that error. So there it is, fill in sale amount before moving row. So we fill in our sale amount, let's say $100. And now we click sold. Now that row just disappeared, and let's check to make sure it appeared over here, and there we go. And we have our full row over there. So at this point, now you can tell we have a working product and, but let's just spend a couple more minutes reviewing some ways to upgrade this. Um, just in one more way here, let's do the checkbox instead of by status. And then let's also just grab this data instead. So we're gonna veer away from our pen row and we're gonna go to our get range and see how we can take part of our data over. So let's go ahead and just leave this just the way it is with this extra column. We'll pretend this is a column for something else and that we want to use this one instead. So how are we going to manage this? So first of all, let's go ahead and I'm going to do column here. I know it's not the same one, but I can just add one to this. So 11, so this is column 12. And so here we're going to do column 12. And now value, instead of being sold, we're going to do value is true. Because if we check this, it's going to look as true in the object. So now we can keep in our sale amount check here. And so let's go ahead and move this down. Let's add a little comment here. Again, two forward slashes. If sale amount is filled in, continue with moving row. If sale amount is blank, Do not move row and reset. In this case, it'll be checkbox. So let's go ahead and do that. So we determine it is 12 and let's do uncheck. 
There we go. And so we got this part done. Now let's go back up here and figure out what we need to do here. So we have this status that's going to be empty, and so we can't use this append row. So let's go ahead and get rid of that, and let's move this one up here. So first of all, our data set here, we don't want to start in one now. We actually want to start in two, which means we have one less column, so let's go ahead and change that to 10. And that means this one's also going to be down, and let's start with column two. So just to make sure you understand that, if we go to target sheet, get range, we have four potential options. If we scoot down here, we have row, column, number of rows, and number of columns. So row, column, number of rows, number of columns. So this is the row, which is last row plus one. So that'd be the first blank row. And then column two would be our starting one, one row of data and 10 columns of data. So this, this should do now the same thing, but just operating off of the checkbox instead. So let's go ahead and check it out. We don't have a sale amount here, so we should get an error again here. There it is, fill the sale amount for moving row. And look at that, you unchecked it as well. Let's say there's 125. Let's go check, go ahead and move to sheet and see if this one works as well. So it disappeared, so that looks good. And sure enough, there it is. We don't have our sold status, um, anything come over from there. So it looks like we're all good to go. All right, that is it for today. I hope that helps you to see that you can do a quite a bit in app scripts. And we added some different conditions here to make this flow very seamlessly and smoothly with multiple conditions. So make sure to check out the other videos on our channel and hit subscribe to be notified when we post new videos. Thanks and have a great day.